Happy St. Paddy's Day to all out there. Gotta have some festive music in the background for this video. You guys already know I like to do that. I want to wish you guys and your families the best on this holiday. UT Martin will celebrate St. Patrick's Day as well, but not for too long as this bunch of players, they hope to continue their win streak from last episode. Happy to be back with you guys. It's been a while since I uploaded since I was in New Jersey last weekend for a four day drill for the army. It was a grind, but still fun. I'm back home now, and it's time to hop back with Coach Carter. Nine straight victories for his bunch, which is reminding me a lot of year three. You guys may remember the 10 game winning streak we had near the end of last season to propel us forward to the number one seed in the conference heading into postseason. But we'll hop into some simulating to begin episode 29 today, including two teams who book and UT Martin's second place position in the conference thus far. The number three team will be simulating this game, Moorhead State. And then the undefeated Sanford Bulldogs at 9-0 in league play a road game for us. We'll be hopping into that one. And the winning streak comes to an end. Moorhead State, 84-74. They will be victorious in this one. As TJ Clark and uh, four other uh, Moorhead State Eagles got into double figures. Meanwhile, you guys remember Marcus Saunders didn't have the greatest episode last time out despite the stellar play as a team, 5 of 15 today. It's been a little uh, bit of a head scratcher situation, just of trying to figure out what's been wrong with Saunders. It was really Easley's episode, but even he didn't play well in that Moorhead State game. And as we move forward, the Sanford Bulldogs, you guys know their MO at this point in the season, in the series rather, 57 points per game allowed. As you guys can see there, by far the best mark in the conference by over seven a game. Really impressive, very methodical. This is a team that does not uh, beat themselves. And they were competitive for the first two seasons of this series. They fell off a little bit in year three, but now they're back with their best team here in year four. Very old school bunch of players, hard nosed, very well coached. And it's time to see if UT Martin can take down Samford and give them their first conference loss of the season. And Chris Fay will get us on the board. Always a very fun matchup seeing him go up against Seneca Lopez, their seven foot star in the middle. The juniors right now is averaging 10 points a game, and now Chris Fay gets it done on both sides. He records a steal, Saunders in transition, spots up and hits a three. A picture-perfect start for UT Martin against the 9-0 Sanford Bulldogs. Sanford senior point guard Kyle Jeter, former Juco transfer, he's actually out for this game, so we're going to be seeing a lot more of Kyle Dyson, their backup, as he turns it over there and going coast-to-coast -coast is Marcus Saunders. For his second basket, great start, 12-6 to six now as we cut under 10 minutes to play. Andy Kingston though, he'll drive, knock over Faye while he's at it. That looked like a perfect charge, but the ref thought otherwise. And Kingston, one of the many big guys here in the first half who made an impact for Sanford. You guys know they live in the paint, 14-12 to 12 as Sanford closes the gap. Cannot take this team lightly, it's going to take a lot to... Uh, manufacture any sort of lead against this team as Saunders hits a three so he's off to his best start in a while we really need a big game from him in this one five point lead but that'll be trimmed to three as Kingston hits again coming off the bench for a quick seven points he's been perfect in all three of his attempts Kingston 19 to 16 now Diggs and Hamilton are the backcourt along with Davion Baez and Diggs will spot up and hit one the lead will jump from three to six with one flick of the wrist from Diggs, and he's really been turning it on as of recent. It's really been inviting to see, especially after the way him and Hamilton started the year so cold. And now Hamilton plays some defense. He'll strip Lopez, and he looks for his best friend, of course. Pierre Tejax. How many times have they hooked up for a connection and an assist in this series? When they're playing their best, they're normally finding each other for baskets. 24-16 is your ball game right now. And now Davion Baez will tip a pass. Bounce pass to Hamilton. Another perfectly executed fast break. The lead is up to 10. The biggest for either side at this point. Hamilton with his third assist. All three have gone to Diggs. And just like that in three possessions, Diggs has seven points. Jared Marino will fire. He's a threat from outside, but he's missed his first two attempts. And finally, Seneca Lopez misses his first shot. He's got six points up to this point, however. And now Diggs again on the fast break gets it done. Nine points in seven minutes for the sophomore. Chris Fay picked up two early fouls, so we haven't seen much of him, which is something we can't really afford in this game. Seneca Lopez, he tips one in there 
for another basket here in the first half. A 10-point game as Diggs and Hamilton still out there. And Diggs will do it again. Man, every basket he's hit with his offhand seemingly. How about 5 of 6 today for Diggs for 11 points? And he's still out there along with Hamilton as he feeds the paint. There is Teron Gardner who continues to impress in the post. So polished already as a freshman whenever his back is to the basket. 32 to 22 so far today. Coach Carter is a very happy man after the first 15 minutes. For a minute there, it looked like UT Martin was going to fall into Sanford's trap and play slower. But Diggs and Hamilton were a big reason why they stayed with their up-tempo play. The only negative is the rebounding situation. It favors Sanford by three, thanks to Lopez. But that's really been their only source of income when it terms to, in terms of offense. They're 0 of 9 from 3. They looked overwhelmed. Meanwhile, UT Martin has Saunders with 9 and 3 assists. Diggs, of course, was the man everybody's talking about with 11 points. 9 team assists versus Sanford's 3. Lopez was the Bulldogs' top performer with 8. And Matt Payne, their leading scorer with 14. There he is right there. Speak of the devil. He only had one field goal in the first uh, half, but there he is hitting his second as his uh, average for the game has jumped just like that from three to six now to nine his third three ball and just like that Sanford's starting to turn it on a little bit I mean they went 0 of 9 and now they're starting out 3 of 3 from beyond the arc but then Jared Marino's out of control Saunders now another lob this time it's to Lawton who finishes it off four assists for Saunders his playmaking has been great after he's kinda gone cold a little bit here he started off the game very solid but he hasn't scored in a, a pretty long time, and now Joey Woodside will spot up. Great job fading to the corner. Whenever you feed the post, you got to keep moving on the perimeter. That's how you find some open shots. Great heads up play from Woodside. And now Marino will skate by Luke Lawton, and perfectly defended by Blaine Fry, but somehow Marino will still get on the board for the first time today. His first make and five attempts this time. Blaine Fry. He meets him with a lot more resistance at the rim. Swats that one. He's, of course, your team leader in blocks per game. Top 10 in the conference at that. And now digs from the corner. 14. As he retakes the lead for UT Martin, Sanford once again, like I said, coming on strong here in the second half, but we're trying our best to keep the Bulldogs at bay. Lopez now in the paint, not many 7-footers, you see doing that, how about a fade from 15 feet? Red Hot is the 7-footer, 14 for him today. And UT Martin has gone cold on offense seemingly here, and that's a big reason why we don't see Easley or Saunders out on the court. They've been struggling in the second half, so we're going to have to look for other sources of income on the offensive end, including guys like Davion Bias, who continues to impress. And some big minutes here for the underclassmen. How about Diggs and Hamilton along with the starters out there? Diggs rattles one home. 17 for him today. And that'll be a timeout by Sanford as Diggs ties it up. Sanford retakes the lead under three to go. They're playing some hot potato around the perimeter. They work it inside. Seneca Lopez, no matter what we throw at him, he continues to convert. 18 form, despite Faye and Fry, both trying their best to keep him out of the scoring column. Under two and a half to go as Easley and Saunders retake the court. Gotta go with our best players here down the stretch, and Easley will stroke it. He had two quick baskets, but ever since then, he's gone absolutely cold. And you can see on the body language for not only him, but Faye and other players as well. UT Martin feeling the pressure right now of relinquishing their really good first half performance and dropping this very winnable game here against the top team in the conference. Cal Dyson, he will work this one around as he will find Moreno spotting up. Huge shot for Jared Moreno. Cal Dyson with assist number three. And Moreno, who struggled all game, has had a couple huge shots here down the stretch. 60 seconds to play. Back against the wall. Samford on the attack. And Matt Payne. Why would Saunders leave him open? Four three balls for Matt Payne in the second half. 11 points for him in this second half of play. And now Saunders will throw it away. Out of control there. And down by 7 with 40 seconds left. Now down by 9 after Cal Dyson will put in that layup. Yeah, you got better chances of winning the Powerball than getting back into this game. Timeout, Coach Carter didn't really fix too much. And UT Martin lets a very winnable game and a huge game slip away out of their grasp. They drop two straight now. 60, uh, 62 to 55. Saunders and Easy once again. They combined it for 8 of 24 shooting. We just can't figure out 
why they both have been a little out of sorts, more specifically Saunders. Matt Payne and Jared Marino with really important second halves, and of course Seneca Lopez, he always seems to kill us every time we play the Bulldogs. So Samford improves to 10-0 in conference play, furthering their lead, but we do get some redemption here. Jacksonville State, a border fringe playoff team right now. We do sneak this one out, 23 for Chris Fay in a career night. Not his career high, but one of his best performances of his career. Saunders had 21, but 11 of those were off free throws. Still didn't shoot well, but we were able to survive the Gamecocks 48 point performance in the second half. And now, halfway through conference play, I saw some comments saying that you want some updates from around the country and around the conference. So we'll take a timeout and we'll go over some uh, stories and such from around the nation, starting off with the top 25. We got Maryland and Michigan State, two teams that have won the Natty at least once here in the series. Gonzaga, very interesting to see them 19-0, just like they are in real life up to this point, heading into the real life March Madness. We got Houston, who's really good in uh, the virtual NCAA as well. Some surprising names as we go down the list. We got UNLV, UTEP here in the top 25, and Vanderbilt, number 25 in the nation. And now we're gonna look at some of the leaders here in the conference. With Marcus Saunders struggling a bit, doesn't look like his uh, player of the year campaign is very likely at this point. At this point, we just gotta continue to win games. Britton Holland leads him by over a point per game in points, and Easy is actually top 10 as well. Leader in rebounds is Roger Lewandowski, who we're actually going to be facing in the last matchup of this episode. We're going to see him later on. Blaine Fry also top 10 and rebounds a game. Leader in assists, we have LaShawn Williamson, who also leads in steals per game. And Jaden King is just right behind him, the do-it-all uh, junior college transfer. He's averaging 5.5, and, and we see easily... He rounds out the top 10 for assists per game in the conference. Now, steals per game, it's pretty interesting because for the first time, we see Easley really stepping it up on defense. That's something I haven't talked about enough this season. He is actually third in the conference in steals per game. And I remember after we lost David Giles after the uh, year two offseason, we were always a little worried about our perimeter defense, but he's been a big reason why the loss of Giles on the perimeter hasn't been as big of a hole as one might have thought. And Blaine Fry, the first guy to really be a shot blocker, a rim protector in this series. He's averaging about one and a half blocks per game. And immediately after we took a loss to Samford, Tennessee State with the upset. At home, they take down Samford by in a one-point win. I would have loved to see if that was a game-winning shot or what happened there. Unfortunately, I don't have access to a play log, but Matt Payne's 31 points was not enough to solidify uh, Samford's perfect run here in conference play. So, back home against the 5-12 and Southeast Missouri State Red Hawks, a team that every year they always surprise. I mean, they've made the conference uh, championship twice, winning it one year as an 8th seed. We actually took them down in the uh, semifinals last year. But they've fallen a little bit on hard times, the youngest team we've ever seen, but they are loaded with big men. And they've really changed their MO from a perimeter-oriented team with the likes of guys like Chris Bowden Key who have graduated. Now they got a lot of star-studded potential in the interior with guys like Nate Stinson. Stinson's a 6'11", lanky forward who actually leads this team in scoring. And of course, Ladarius Kitchen, the 6'10", 310-pound power forward who actually got his pocket pick there by Chris Fay. And Saunders, two attempts on the other end, cannot finish. So another underwhelming start for Saunders as there is Jermaine Holmes, the freshman who assists to Mitchell Lane. Holmes is a guy we haven't seen yet here in the series. He's a point forward type player, a guy who can really handle the ball at the wing position. And Chris Fay has his pocket picked by Ladarius Kitchen. Kitchen's third steal already. And now Mitchell Lane will fire for his first three ball. And with a snap of a finger, all of a sudden the Red Hawks have taken control and Kitchen will add a block to his hat trick of steals here in the first four minutes. And now Ruben Joseph, another guy who can stroke it from outside as he hits from three. 15 to four. I was very surprised to see the Red Hawks with a very underwhelming record so far this season because they got a lot of scoring upside. There is Easley there with a little one-on-one. -on -one. Even though he's been struggling, I've been very happy to see that Easley here in the senior season we really seen him take that next step forward. He's been amazing. Whenever he first started out, he was only really a shoot-first point guard, but he's really developed into a basketball player, if that makes sense. 
Jacques digs, he will hit another three, a high arcing shot with a high arcing bounce, but it'll drop. He has his first three on two attempts, but still playing catch up here, 26 to 15 as Blaine Fry snatches one there. The second player in a steals per game on the team just behind Dwight Easley, and this time it's Diggs assisting to Pierre Hamilton. Hamilton found Diggs a lot in the last game, so he decided to return the favor there. And now Davion Baez makes a crucial mistake. He tries to go for the steal, which leaves the back door wide open. And Chris Fay, who came to help, there was a lot of congestion there. He actually fouls Feeney, and Chris Fay is a little shaken up after he came down wrong. Like I said, there was a lot of bodies there in the middle. I, it looks like he might have rolled his ankle on somebody coming down. And Chris Fay with a high ankle sprain. Oh no, this is not the news you wanted to hear. Artie with UT Martin struggling, losing two out of the last three ball games, and now they are reeling today against the Red Hawks, and for the better part of a month, Chris Fay will be sidelined. So this will make things even tougher as right now the Red Hawks are getting everything they want in the perimeter. Check out Kitchen there with the post hook, uh, kiss off the glass to boot, and now Saunders will get blocked. Kitchen with his second rejection on Saunders today will work this one around them after we retain possession and in all the confusion Davion Baez will spot up and hit yet, say it with me, another three pointer for the senior, he's been a diamond in the rough all year long. 128 left to go, Ruben Joseph off the mark that time, Fry clears his third rebound, check out this ambitious play, Saunders cross court to Easley who hits a three, finally Easley back in the column of three-pointers made and we're down by nine heading into the half with them being an eight seed and still making some noise these last two years in the playoffs you're seeing why the Red Hawks have still been such an unpredictable team even if they're five and twelve last game it was Sanford trying to slow down UT Martin in the first half and now it seems like we're gonna have to take a page out of the Bulldogs playbook as we try to cool down the Red Hawks SEMU they shot over 70 percent in the first half expect coach Carter to take off a full court press Fage is a huge loss. We've already been getting torched inside. Nate Stinson has 14 points. Kitchen is 2 for 2. Mitchell Lane has made 4 layups for 8 points. And for our side, Easley has 7. And Saunders has 4. But together, they're only 5 of 14. Another outing where they just can't find their rhythm. Blaine Fry has 4 and 4 right now. Teron Gardner has 5 off the bench trying to step in and fill the shoes of Faye, but on defense, we desperately need them to step up their game, and Gardner is tacked for the foul there on Nate Stinson. He is such a hard guard. Nate Stinson is a lanky seven-footer, and he knows how to use his length to find positioning in the inside, and now there is Jermaine Holmes, his first three-pointer made all season long. His three-ball rating is only a 54, but he still strokes it. You're seeing firsthand just how good an offense can be when they play in rhythm, and that's what they've been doing here. Check out Ladarius Kitchen with the behind the back pass. Man, he's like that guy you see at the Y who's huge, and you don't expect much from him, but he has a high basketball IQ, and he can play. Nice assist there, and now Mitchell Lane gets into double figures there. Assist number eight for Ruben Joseph, who's made a couple three balls as well. Speaking of three balls, Saunders will launch, and yet another miss. Gene Schofield out there playing. He's also been dinged up, as you guys know. So, so, a lot of big men injuries here. And now, Lamont Bird, who has had just as good of a game as, say, Nate Stinson or Ladarius Kitchen. And here down the stretch, Pierre Hamilton will assist to Davion Baez to make the final score a little bit closer. But, as you can see, 74-49, to we let this game get out of hand after Faye's injury. 37 to 21 there in the second half. Southeast Missouri State, they reached 37 points in each half and nobody reached double figures. This game for UT Martin, their closest was Deron Gardner with nine off the bench. Mitchell Lane, Stinson, uh, Kitchen, and Bird all reached at least 10 points and they were above 60% from the floor. So UT Martin dropping three out of the last four. And they still somehow are still in second place. We've been really benefited by Samford dropping two out of the last three and Moorhead State dropping two straight. So 
Maybe this is the game we can get things back on track facing EIU who is not currently a playoff team but they do have arguably the best big man in the conference, Roger Lewandowski. The senior, he's been a pest every year in the series, 17 points per game, the league's leading rebounder at 9, and he also averages at least a block shot a game. Jonas Fry, a 3 and D player who also tacks 4 assists a game onto his totals, but this is a team that if we're going to get this ship sailing back straight, it's got to be against EIU. And as you can see here, Teron Gardner making his first start of his career. But yeah, like I was saying, EIU, they allow the most points in the conference per game at near 80 a night to their opponents. And their offense isn't anything special either outside of Jonas Fry and Lewandowski. But it's a little sneaky on offense for them because they do have guys who can stretch the floor such as Ian Huffleberry and uh, Aiden Beamish, two first year players, as Lewandowski will get us underway. And we're two minutes into the game and still no points for UT Martin until Saunders will knife his way through two Panther defenders and get us on the board. But only two baskets through the first four minutes. Blaine Fry will draw a double team. Check out the high IQ there as he found good positioning and he created the angle to find Luke Lawton away from the double team and Lawton this was a night for him to remember. Remember that for sure. 7-4 to four right now as Easy finds some real estate from beyond the arc to fire one up. His first shot attempt of the game will go down. And once again, we're just looking for improvement for Easy and Saunders down the stretch here. Lawton pump fakes. He'll drive and check out that finish. Wow. Lawton takes on three defenders, puts the ball on the floor, and scores. And he's made his first three shot attempts tonight. Seven points. For the junior from New Zealand, nine minutes to go. Jonas Fry will attack and he will convert and one over Dwight easily. Jonas Fry and Lewandowski, two seniors never to take lightly on any given night. A five point advantage as we near five minutes to go. Jamil Cannon will come off the bench, deliver a beautiful pass to Lewandowski. Cannon, a freshman from Las Cruces, New Mexico, another freshman that EIU is excited for. The floor and the ceiling is very high for this team going forward as Lewandowski scoops up offensive rebound number two as he's on pace for 10 rebounds already here in the first half. He's got six to this point. 18 to 17 now. EIU really showing that they're coming to play tonight, but that is until Diggs will fire and hit. So he's already got a free throw. Now a field goal to his name. Diggs continues to light the world on fire. He's out there with Easley for the backcourt. And Easley will take on two backups for EIU. He got past Will Vaughn. And then the backup point guard, Damon Barton, was too slow to rotate. And Easley up to eight points now. 24-19. Trying to keep the hungry EIU Panthers at bay as they continue to fight for a playoff position. Saunders, he goes right past Jonas Fry. And another and one for the Skyhawks. UT Martin actually got the Panthers into the penalty here in the first half. Made a lot of free throws, which really helped out their offense. A quick check-in with Saunders to this point. He's got two field goals made on four attempts for five points after the free throw. Make that seven. Davion Bias thought about it from three, but he instead will make the smart play, assisting to the senior. 29-23. Eastern Illinois still hanging around. It hasn't really been the most exciting game. Not the uh, most pretty game either, but UT Martin still handling their business. Roger Lewandowski will exit the first half for the rest of the 154 remaining due to his two fouls after the three-point play by Teron Gardner, who unfortunately has been struggling a bit here in his first collegiate start. Every game he's been really efficient, but he's been one of five to start this game. So maybe he's not exactly ready yet to start. Who knows? Aiden Beanemish from the corner. Him and even Huffleberry have both had really solid performances. He's got six going into the break. And Gardner not in time there. A little too tardy at the end of the first half. A seven point advantage for UT Martin. After the slow start, we finally saw glimpses of the Skyhawks that we really missed. But it's against a three win team in EIU. So <laughs> it's not really the best team to gauge where we're at right now. But Luke Lawton is on pace for a career high. He led the Hawks with 10 points. The most he's ever topped out at in his career is 15. He's made free th uh, three free throws. Saunders has eight points, making half of his attempts. Diggs and Easley both have six apiece. And all those players I just named have been to the line for at least two shot attempts. 
A lot of good work from the charity stripe. Jonas Fry leads the Panthers with seven. Lewandowski has six and six boards. EIU leads the rebounding battle by one. Make that two after Roderick and a bong new. He will he will corral one and kick it out to Ian Huffleberry. He'll make a three. Aiden Beamish and Ian Huffleberry have both been silent assassins. They both have nine points up to this point. And both of the starting big guys for the Panthers, they both have two fouls apiece. So hopefully the loss of Faye uh, will not be as noticeable as we see Saunders there getting back on the right track with a three-pointer. And now Easley, we've seen a lot of good one-on-one -on -one from him today. That'll continue as he zooms right past uh, Roger Lewandowski for another basket. And maybe that's the trick right now for Easley to get back to the easily that we all know and love. I mean, maybe he needs to have a little bit more one-on-one -on -one in his game, not as much uh, three-point shooting. And now Aiden Beamish will knock down yet another triple. And he's made half of his attempts from three. And EIU has been coming to play so far tonight. But Luke Lawton there on the break. Still, EIU, they've had good shot contests on Lawton, but it's just been his night so far. 40-34, to 34, the Skyhawks lead, and now Lewandowski, he'll cop it, cough it up. Blaine Fry with his fourth steal, and check out Lawton. He's been doing it all today. How about a fade over the double team that they bring his way, and he'll draw the foul. Not exactly the best shot attempt, but I mean, hey, we got bailed out there, and sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and now Lawton does it on both ends. Hamilton to Saunders, perfectly run fast break, but Saunders, he can't ask for a much better look there. That's one he has to knock down. Huffleberry with the outlet, setting up Aiden Beamish for a three-pointer, number three on the ball game, as he's made three and four attempts. 43-40. to 40 as EIU continues to hang around and Lawton will receive a screen from Dominique Cleveland who's had a larger role in the last few games due to Chris Fay's absence and Lawton will use that screen to perfection 15 for him on the night. Huffleberry to Aiden Beamish that one is a little bit short as UT Martin still with a five-point advantage all bench players including or with the exception of Marcus Saunders rather as he's the one who knocks it down there in transition 48 to 40 now and now a tip pass by Teron Gardner even though he's been struggling you already know the freshman's always going to play defense and now Lawton will put his shoulder into Will Vaughn and score in the post 17 for the New Zealand native he's won he's already eclipsed his career high and he's already Two baskets away from 20 points, and now Dominique Cleveland. This might have been his best game of his young career, and Lawton will score again. I don't know what has gotten into him. I don't know what kind of breakfast he had today, but he will knock down another, and he was a big reason why down the stretch UT Martin held off the three-win EIU Panthers, and Lawton would not be done either. Check him moving across the baseline, spotting up, rattling that one home. 73 to 58 will be your final as Lawton breaks 20 points for the first time in his career and Dominique Cleveland had a nice day he had five rebounds and a big block shot there you just saw a couple plays ago a 15 point win like I said earlier not the best team to go up against to really see what type of uh team we have here right now with UT Martin and seeing if they're going to turn things around but right now we're just going to enjoy it. 21 points for Lawton on top of that he also had two steals and two blocks the man of the hour man what a performance he put together today easily had a really efficient day only four or five but 12 and two Saunders he had a step in the right direction today still need to see better shooting from him Diggs and Hamilton hooked up quite a lot. Hamilton had four assists. Three of those went to Jacques Diggs' nine points. And Gene Schofield, this was the first game that he was healthy. And he actually had a pretty solid performance. Four points and three rebounds off the bench. And this was a big win in terms of the standings. Because UT Martin, right now a game and a half behind Samford. They're going to keep winning. So, nine and four looks pretty good right now. Despite the struggles we've had recently. We're still two games up on uh, Moorhead State which is of course you know very uh, uh, good to see as we actually have a meeting with Moorhead State coming up in the next episode we're going to be playing them but these next three games it's good for us right now because our schedule is starting to ease up a little bit a lot easier opponents and as you can see right here these seven games on your screen right now this is it for year four these are the last games of the regular season right here so we got a lot of big ones coming up for the second time this season, we're going to have to face Samford and Moorhead State back-to-back. -back. I'm going to show off both those games as well. 
so. And of course, when we play Murray State, no matter how good or bad they are, they always seem to pack a punch against us, that rivalry. Hopefully it's rekindled again this year. So thanks for joining me here on episode 29. It's been a fun one, despite the struggles. I was just happy to get back to the hardwood with you guys. UT Martin, we have a couple of huge games coming up. Of course, the schedule eases up a little bit, but more head state and Sanford, we still got to rematch them. So, the end of year four is coming in the next episode. On top of that, I also have a new mini series coming. I'm going to simulate every March Madness game in NBA 2K21 to hype you guys up for the tournament. Hope you guys are excited for that. Stay tuned and a lot of other good content coming up here on the channel. I'm glad to be back, everybody.